We're two recording dudes. Wow. Wow. Thanks for tuning in to 101.3 BKMG The Farce. Coming to you live from separate places. We record. Now presenting The Bane and Mickey Show. We're pros here. We're basically pros on The Bane and Mickey Show. When yeah. you come to us, you get quality content with quality claps. Nothing but quality boiled and brewed just for <laughs> pop, fine perfection. That's Boiled all and brewed we offer here. just for you. Yeah, that should be our. We put the T in quality. <laughs> <laughs> and it's never spilled sometimes. We don't spill the tea at all? Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. Some of the, some of the time. Every of the time. Every time. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, yeah, it's... It's yet another episode of the Bane and Mickey show. Yep, yep. Oh, oh yeah. This fine hour in the middle of your summer months. Um, I believe. Almost the fall months. Almost the fall months. Um, yeah, it's catching up on us. It's it's crazy wild. Wild and crazy seasons. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things move fast. You Things know. move fast. You gotta... Look around once in a while, because life moves pretty fast. You might miss it. What uh, have you not been missing out on and watching? Recently? I don't know. I haven't really watched anything new, but I did recently rewatch The Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah? And that's always a treat. Still Apparently holds there's up. rumors of a reboot with Chris Evans as the dentist and Taron Edgerton as... Oh. Uh, Taron Edgerton as Seymour. Scar jo as... Audrey and Billy Porter is Seymour. Oh, huh. interesting. Huh. Allegedly. 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 All right. We'll keep an eye out for that. I watched, uh, I finally finished Falcon of the Winter Soldier. Um, well, it took you two months. Okay, you know what? <laughs> um, I actually enjoyed it pretty well. Uh, I wish there were, well, like, I wish there were more episodes just because it's a great, like, old married couple bickering back and forth <laughs> for 45 minutes. But at yes. the same time, I think the six episodes fit the story arc well. Like, I don't think they need to expand it more. Um, and once again, it was a really nice, like, addition to the MCU without having a whole film. I mean, it's basically mm. the length of, like, two films. Um, you know, like, if you had just made a Falcon and Winter Soldier movie, I don't think it would have worked as well because you would have cut out a lot of the story with some important parts in there. So I think it, it fit nicely in its little yes. in its little thing. Agreed. And it's it's nice to get some depth on these characters that are up until this point kind of seen as secondary characters. Um but now they're part of a new era and so it's nice to get some individual time with them both. Also they're just great both actors and they they play their characters so well. Um Plus, it gives us the, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, the in, I don't, can't think of the word, the uh, infallible, I guess, this doesn't seem, that's not what I'm going for, but the ever so wonderful Martian Manhunter himself, Carl Lumbly, as Isaiah Bradley. Uh-huh. And we get another Young Avengers tease. It's pretty yep. cool. Yeah, you get some good stuff. And it plays into uh, some of the new Marvel films coming out a little bit. Spoilers. Because uh, I also watched Black Widow, um, which was bam, 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 really, bam. really good. Um, well worth the wait of decades, but at the same time, <laughs> probably something we should have gotten sooner. Uh, but it's fine. It is really well done. The actors were all really well cast. Um, um, shoot, what's her name? Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh is literally the new... Not She's not replacing Scarlett Johansson, but she's like like 
Scarlett Johansson Apprentice. Like, the fucking, like, stunts and shit she's pulling in that movie are amazing and great. And it's great. I'm excited for her. She's also her currently as a young dating artist. Zach Braff. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. I feel like I knew this, actually. I just don't pay attention too much. But it was really good. Okay. Um, everyone go watch it if you can. Yes. I have not been able to yet, but it'll be on my to do list. That's okay. Eventually. It was, I was fortunately able to safely go to a theater to watch it. I would not pay to watch it at home just because it's a film <laughs> that I feel needs to be seen in a theater. Um, yeah, and that's this true. was a this was a discussion my dad and I had because he was like we could do the Disney premiere thing and watch it and I was like I don't if we're gonna no I don't you can pay the same amount of money if not a little bit more for a better quality experience and I'm glad we did um, <laughs> but again only go if you're feeling safe about it I felt pretty we felt pretty safe about it we were also like one of two parties in the theater when we saw it but this was also on like a matinee on like a monday so you know <laughs> <Most> <laughs> if you time it right then. yeah if you time it right <laughs> um but it was really good um and and Today. it was yeah well i mean we'll have a Sorry. whole discussion on it you know but it, it's some good there's some good information about black widow that we've been missing i think that was good to see it would and, probably have done better if it came out sooner but yeah. that's okay that's fine. but again like great cast well directed, good stuff. Anyways, uh, for another time, we'll save that for an episode on some Star Wars. Because I think I could go on for a while, and once you see it, you can probably go on for a while as well. That is probably very true. <laughs> but today... how did you feel about Anthony? Real quick, one last Falcon yeah. and the Winter Soldier thing. How did you feel about Anthony Mackie's uh, final suit? Um, let me look at it again. Hold on. <laughs> I just, it seemed really white. And like, my concern, anytime I see something like that pretty and white, it's like, it's going to get dirty so fast. <laughs> um, and that's my is, biggest concern. No, this is true. Um, yeah, it, I don't know. Because it, yeah, it is going to get dirty really fast. It looks nice. <laughs> it looks nice. I like it. It matches the aesthetic and the theme <laughs> But, it, but it's going to get dirty so fast. Yeah, I would have put maybe more blue and red and less white. I don't know, because his old suit was so dark, too. So it is like a nice, like, new era kind of thing. I yeah, don't know. that's true. I feel the same way. Okay, sorry. We just finished our discussion on on Black Widow, but this is in the trailer. But they're all wearing these nice, like, white, like uniform suit things and i'm like <laughs> look <laughs> you're getting bloody you're getting dirty who who's your fashion um, designer but they're in the snow so it makes sense but they aren't spoilers also, that's the one spoilers is, they aren't <laughs> but her hair is also bright red and yeah she's not covering it up at all like this fit, fit with florence pew who has like lighter hair but no no okay anyways Sorry, this just goes with the whole podcast. superhero. We'll have a whole episode where we just rant about superhero costumes and how how <laughs> terribly designed they are. That's a great idea. We'll, we'll go try and get E from um, the Incredibles on. She can give us her opinion. Nut gips. Um, you think we can get her? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll call busy. her up. I'll call her up. We're we're good friends. All right, that makes sense. She doesn't like me after I decided I wanted a suit that was all capes. Oh, Gavin. Why did you? Okay, I, I could have given capes, you some references. Ankle capes. I could have given you some references. Ooh, ankle case would be kind of dope, though. Okay, okay, I could. He did not see it that way. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, I see where she's coming from, but I also see where you're coming from. So, <laughs> okay. But no. on to something that is pretty much the opposite of the opposite. all of this. Yeah. We are going to talk about Judas. And the Black Messiah. And the Black Messiah. Uh, Not the Bible Judas. <laughs> no, but uh, references, you know, the name, the whole name. I mean, I guess I didn't, I could have made the connection on my own and I didn't. But, you know, you're just talking about it. Because they call, um, they call Fred Hampton the Black Messiah in in some ways. Like right on the top. And Judas is known to betray Jesus. 
in the Bible. And so um, Bill O'Neill is the Judas to his Black Messiah. There's this really so hilarious nice. meme. This is totally off top. It's a little on topic, but it says uh, Jesus cares on a cross. So Jesus is on the short part and then cares is right below the S. But there's no space, so it kind of looks like Jesus and then scares. <laughs> and there's this picture. <laughs> so there's this picture of like Jesus going up to someone and going, "Boo!" It's like Jesus, you scared the shit out of me. That that's amazing. Uh, I feel like that's how it happened in the Bible too. You know, like <laughs> you're just walking around and whoa, God, hi. Um, I mean, yeah, son hi, of God, God Jesus, <laughs> son of God, what the hell are you doing here? I mean, what the heaven are you doing here? <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. So I mean, yeah, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anyways. What um, do you want? Okay. Take a deep breath. <gasps> because we're going to get serious. Um, we're going to get serious here for a moment. Did this here on movie... Serious Pain and Mickey. Was the movie in theaters or did it just come out on HBO? I can't... It came out early in the year... I think it was one of the simultaneous releases. Okay, okay. Because um, this, yeah, it came out this year early on, so it should have been a simultaneous release. Okay. It's um, it's a really good movie. Uh, it's another. Um, we've gotten a lot of like historical movies this year and recently. Um, it's not. It's similar, but not. Because different subject matter and different um, perspectives, but it's it it's akin to Chicago, the trial of the Chicago Seven, um, in the way it's told a little bit, and in the way of diving into these perspectives that we were not told about. Um, and by for a lot of conflicts. we, we mean uh, white people primarily. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it's another dive into history that that you just really are not given um, a lot of the time, unfortunately. Um, so it's a really good one to see. And I was thinking about this when I was when I was writing up our notes, like the last time I probably saw a film like this that really impacted me because it's from a sp- perspective that is not my own was probably. Um, 12 years a slave um in something so gritty and heavy and um raw um that you don't get from the you know that you're not taught about um quite that way yes and and it's kind Uh, of sad that it's been so long to have that you know when did 12 years a slave come out i don't know i was in high school 2000 what probably 11 or 12 yeah uh 2013 I, so it's been almost close. 10 years which is <laughs> so not quite 12 not yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry um i mean i feel like there's been other movies though that probably have come out that are in that vein a lot more in the last year or two yeah. like you said chicago 7 ma rainy a bit ma rainy um but it's still been just so long you know and then even right you know and it's like what what have we as a society had to make happen and go through in order to have these films and i feel like the other thing was i watched it closer to when it first came out and i mean i was provoking and all's well and good but i rewatched it before we started talking about it and I don't know what is different, but it made me so, so, so mad this time. Yeah. Not like all the, just everything about it is very frustrating. And and not mad about the movie itself, but mad about no, the no, no. story. No, no, no. Mad about the, not even the, like the story and the way it's told is. Is great. So it's told the, well. The, the side of the story, the mad that this is how it went down. <laughs> mad that this is how it went down, mad that this is how these people were treated, mad that, you know, why, how white society was, you know, treating people of color, mad how white society is trying to erase that, mad how 
This was the 60s and 70s. This was not that long ago. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think, uh, yeah, you were saying you really get a sense of how recently these evol- events unfolded, especially at the end when they tell you um, that his son and his girlfriend, they weren't, I don't believe they were married. I don't, mm, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, she, they show a picture of them and she's barely in her she's 60s. She's old, you know? but like, she's not old, old. And her son is 40. You know, just, just about 45, 50. 40? That wouldn't track. Would it? He's in his 40s or 50s. Well, yeah, I guess he would have been born in the mid 70s, probably. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it's no, just you're right. like that's. And I, I, you know, my mom and dad were born in the early '60s, and my mom still remembers when Martin Luther King was shot. I mean, she was little, <laughs> but remembers watch, seeing it on TV. And it's like and you know that's not that long ago. Yet when we're learning about it in as kids in history and stuff, it they make you it, they make it feel like it's a hundred years away. It's like an entirely different time period, but it really is not. It's barely a generation behind us. And even with that, Martin Luther King and Anne Frank were born the same day. Well, not the same day, the same year, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. they would be still alive today had they not been killed. But also, yeah, you know, people, uh, you know, one of the things that black people and people of color will say is that, like, the FBI or the CIA killed JFK and as white people were like, that's ridiculous. They would never do such a thing. But then you literally see it happen in this movie. Yeah. Now it could be an exaggerated truth, but with what we are learning and being shown, it doesn't actually seem that far off. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's explored really well in this film. It's, you know, and it's not like shove it in your face. Like, you're wrong sort of way it's it's very i don't know <laughs> there was not another another word but it's it's well, no, portrayed well it's not... and written well and and described well and and even just the way it's edited together in this kind of like back and forth um perspective between being uh, with the Black Panthers and then being with the FBI is interesting um, and well done as well. I think when you mean like it's not in your face because it's not trying to like it's just showing you the events. Yeah. It's not trying to It's not to like shoving it down your throat trying to be like you to you're think so anything. wrong about everything and you're and, and it, it is telling you these things they like what you've been taught is not right but it's showing you without yeah. telling you in a non-aggressive what... way it's t- it's showing right yeah. um, in some points yeah, yeah some yeah. points it is aggressive but that's because the events themselves are inherently yeah. aggressive um for those that need a reminder or who are listening and haven't watched it basically we follow um along um bill o'neill who uh is talked into being a mole for the fbi um as instead of going to jail for stealing cars and impersonating a cop. Um, so he becomes a mole for the Black Panther, or in the Black Panther um, party during the early 70s um, and the end of the 60s um, and follows along uh, Fred Hampton, who's the um, chairman of the Chicago branch of the black party or the black panther party um and so billy is uh struggling with how how much he he is growing into you know in uh supporting the black panther party as well as how much he is being manipulated by the fbi to (laughs) do this task and and the fact that he really can't get out of it 
without. Oh, no, he's pretty much stuck stuff. in a corner. Yeah. No matter what he, you know, every time he tries to get out of it, they they threaten him with, "Well, you can go to jail. We can kill you. We can tell the Black Panthers that you're a mole, and they can kill you." Sort of thing. So you know, dealer's choice. It's all fine. Yeah. Um. But. You know, uh, it's it's really well done. The cast, I think, is perfectly chosen. Um, I love Lakeith Stanfield. Um, and I need Me to watch too. some more of his stuff, especially rewatch some stuff. And Daniel Kaluuya, I don't think I've really seen him in anything except Get Out. <laughs> uh, He's also in Black Panther. He is in Black Panther. And Get Out also has Lakeith. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think... I've really seen him. Oh, he's in uh, Black Mirror. He, oh, yeah, he is in that that uh, that Black Mirror episode. But you know, like, I think my, I think I haven't I haven't been able to explore a lot of his work other than Get Out, and so it's kind of nice to and interesting to see him in such a dramatic historical piece, and he does a really good job. Um, they both do. They both do. Yes. Um. The only thing unbelievable about his character is that I he doesn't look twenty two. He doesn't, which <laughs> you learn. Yeah, you well. He yeah, he was twenty one. Barely, you know, when when he died, and I uh, I didn't quite. It's kind of hard to believe that with with Daniel Kaluuya per, portraying him, but then you see that video at the end of him. They show a video of. Um. Fred, yeah. Of Fred Hampton. And and in that video he 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 does look he is very mature and and you know, I would probably if I didn't I would assume that that he was like 25 maybe in that video, 24, you know, a mm -hmm. little like still in his 20s but a little older, but but then when you know, you can you can all, you can see that he is he is very young and and it's just the way he holds himself and the way he preaches and and is so confident um in his mission um that that gives him kind of that older appearance which i think if they had cast someone younger it maybe wouldn't have worked quite as well even no i agree i feel like daniel really brings it in every way pretty much he just sort of he crushes because yeah. he's the best yeah no they he does a really good job um this is also another film similar to Chicago seven, where they have a collection of archive footage with recreated footage. And I really love that. Um, first of all, the, I, I will say the one they have these interviews with, um, Bill O'Neill with Lakeith. And then at the end you see the actual interviews and it's like almost the exact same shot. It's like, <laughs> I was like, Whoa, who did, who like, photoshopped this but um no it's really good but then it also just when they use the archive footage of the civil rights movement and the 70s and the 60s and so i'm gonna stop saying those decades backwards but um <laughs> it, it just really drives it and hits it home how how the reality of of these events and 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 how it happened and so it you know, it just really brings that point in of, yeah, this is our, unfortunately, our history. Well, unfortunately, in some ways, but I would, you know, there are good things to come of it more from the, not the white side. <laughs> <laughs> then we also have uh, Jesse Plemons as FBI Special Agent Roy Mitchell. Uh-huh. And I, I like jesse plemons but god he plays a lot of dickheads he, he does yeah i mean at least he played it well that you don't like roy mitchell and i don't know what that says about jesse plemons but <laughs> i don't know i just don't like, like his you face kinda now like because roy? of it but <laughs> like you sort of want to like roy when you're watching it but then you're like he's so slimy though yeah he just play. i feel like he plays the balance of likability and sliminess really well well and then they do those things where they show you like he's not in control of all of it too and you're like right i don't want to like him though you're 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 trying right. to make me like him but i don't want to like him 
I know. It's very annoying. Um, Dominique Fishbach plays Deborah Johnson, who is... I love her. She does so good, so well. She is um, Fred Hampton's girl and and the mother of his child. And um, she does a really good job. Uh, it's, I would say, though, she doesn't have a lot of lines, which is a little unfortunate, you know? A lot of her interactions are kind of quiet or in the background. But I feel like the lines that she does have are powerful lines they are powerful lines it's it's but it's almost like a then when you see the history of like what she she's done since you know she she has revived the black panther party and and keeps it going with her son and and it's like i wish she could have had a little more of that power in the film and maybe that it didn't go like that because she was a woman (laughs) but well i mean but also maybe she doesn't really get that power until Until after after, Fred's gone. Which is true. And, I mean, I agree, maybe she should have had more screen time, but it's also not really about her at all. Yeah. no, And not not even that she needed more screen time, I I think just voicing herself a little bit. Like, even when her friend asks her, um, realizes that she's pregnant, and is like, does he know? She, she, I don't think she says a single word during that whole conversation. From what I can remember. And it's, and it's and it and you know I mean that might just be how she is and and again Dominique Fishbach does a really good job of of doing that without talking, you know. And it, but yeah, I also just feel like her emotions without without talking are really powerful. She's really good. Like you can read a lot of it in her, what she's not saying in her emotions and in her face. You can sort of read and sort of imply what she's feeling uh-huh. based off of that. You know, like in the end with like right after Fred gets shot, it stays on her for like, so it's like a 60 second scene Yeah. from the time they go in, say something, kill him and leave. But it just stays on her the whole time. But I feel like you get all of the emotion like right there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, she could have spoke. But it's almost more powerful that she did not. She didn't. Yeah, she didn't need to in in some of those moments. Um, we also have Ashton Saunders and Aldi Smith uh, as a couple of the other Black Panthers. Um, and then you have Martin Sheen as J. Edgar Hoover. I hated is... him so much in this whole movie. Yeah. I have never hated Martin Sheen so much in my whole life. Uh, I actually almost didn't recognize him for a second, um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. It was directed by Shaka King, mm-hmm. written by Will Bearson and Shaka King, cinematographer Sean Bobbitt. Very well done, sir. Yeah, it's it's very really beautiful. pretty. It's really pretty, especially the the opening not after after the arc after the the archive footage and the and the um the intro with is it Roy is it Roy Mitchell at that point talking on the stage? I don't know. But when we first see uh when we first see Bill Jay Edgar's on the stage. Okay, okay, it's with Martin Sheen. When we first see Bill, it's really pretty. Um just vibrant red, really cinematic and beautiful and it and it and you're just immediately brought into this world and it's yeah it's it just it's amazing <laughs> and it and it stays like that for all of it <laughs> yes um Kristen sprague is the editor and sam lens lesenko was the production design and damn boy those costumes that costume design for all of it was amazing and i mean and again any period piece is gonna have pretty good design <laughs> let's be honest but i think what That's really true. sold this one was the was the costumes yes which who specifically let's see you keep talking and i'll find the costume designer yes mm-hmm. the <laughs> the whole thing is just all around it's very well put together and it's very pretty and it's very coherent mm-hmm. and you really f- get all the sides of these characters and the other thing is that like 
you see Bill's evolution throughout the whole thing. Initially, he doesn't seem super in. Like, he seems into it, but only for the money and whatever. Yeah. But as it goes on, he's a lot more uh, compassionate, I guess is the right word, to the cause on uh, of the Black Panthers and trying to make sure shit... He's trying to get out of it, but he really can't. Yeah. He's already in too deep. Yeah. Um, Charlize Antoinette Jones did the costume design. Well done. Great well job, done. Charlize. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, uh, well, and, and even the way the Black Panthers are pitched to Bill, um, he's told that they're the same as the Klan, which is not true. <laughs> but all. I don't know if you remember this, but at least in my history classes, but when I was younger, that's told that. how they taught it. Yeah, you're kind of told that. And, and I don't think we die, dove deep into the Klan either. Um, but you do know that the clan was terrible and, and, and anything of that but, nature you know, they would always, is awful, but <laughs> they would always prop the Black Panthers. They were like, yeah, they're like the black version of the KKK. And like many people, I just sort of rolled with that for a while. It's all the information you get. And I think especially in an era where like, I mean, at least in like elementary school, we didn't have as much access to the internet. At least, like, our school computers didn't really have internet, from what I remember. We mostly used them for typing and, and reading stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And so it probably wasn't until, like, early high school that we had more autonomy on the internet and to even have proper resources to look into it more. So you really right. just have to roll with what you're told and roll with what the books say, and it's like, that's not at all true. Um, and, I mean, like... Getting older, I sort of realized that wasn't true, but this movie highlighted, for me at least, yeah. how really untrue that all was. Yeah. Um, it's just... Ugh. It all makes me so mad. Makes me so, so mad. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, this movie really has a little bit of... A lot of things, you know. No, I wouldn't say a little bit of everything, but a little bit of a lot of things in like deep, important ways. But you know, you have um, so much fear from the white man about what is happening, just because they don't understand or they don't know the full details. Um, you have. Mentions of like the straight white men writing for people of color. Oh my god! And it's that just, seems terrible. And that whole it was moment is just thing, awful, especially what they're talking about. Everything they about say. it was awful. Well, the you know you see all these things now that are like oh clearly this was written by a man and the male gaze and all these things. I now see some of the relevance of film theory. <laughs> so. There's that, but it's uh, it was just so annoying and frustrating, and I can't even imagine. But well, and then when they're reading off the still flyer, true in some ways the flyer, and you know that a white man wrote it, and it just right, yeah, ridiculous. Um, you get a lot of like police brutality and overkill. Yep, in the film. There's when, and, like when they first arrest Bill, they just sort of let him bleed and don't do shit about it. Yeah, a lot of mistreatment and racism in treatment and in incarceration um, as well. And then, and then yes. you get these interesting moments, too, of Bill and his interactions with Mitchell and this way that Mitchell is treating him nicely and, and trying to befriend him and it's like I'm only going to say this because I know in the 70s it wasn't like this but the way that he he's like trying to befriend a black man but it's like you know any not, other though. place they would not be like this and and no. any other situation he would not treat Bill like this nor would any other person of color like this and so it's 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 really like it, it 
really makes you hesitant to <laughs> for Bill's sake, but then Bill really eats buys into it. Really, Mitchell even says it too. Yeah, later on when he's like, "What would you do if your daughter brought home a black man?" And he's like, "She wouldn't." Yeah. So you can really see that, like, he doesn't really want to do this so much as he sort of has to do it and is trying to keep Bill on his side as best he can. And Bill's just sort of re or, uh, reaping the rewards. Yeah. Well, he is at the beginning until he realizes he's too far into it and, and he's made right. a mistake. <laughs> um, yes. You also, I don't know a lot about the crowns, but we learn about the crowns and their interactions with the Panthers and their um, support, even. They start as rivals and then they mm -hmm. help them even recover from their um, building getting burned down. Um, and then those fucking Confederate flag, Southern Heritage bullshit bitches. That scene, that scene I... was also... <laughs> Ugh. hard yeah but i feel like it starts off really shitty and you sort of think you know how it's gonna go but it does uh show that fred knows that the issue is not black and white not black versus white it's a system of oppression that is affecting everyone mm -hmm. and it's not about me versus you it's about all of us versus them which is sort of what people are trying to, are going into now, where it's not us versus each other; it's everybody as versus a, as the a capitalists. People. Yeah, yeah. Because fuck <laughs> billionaires. Yeah, and then we get these really good scenes of of humanizing Fred, um, which is what we need. Um. Especially to tell the story. And and parts where they humanize Bill as well, which is yes. also needed and important. And Because I, I feel like it would have been really easy to just be like, Fred good, Bill bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, it almost goes along with the whole, the plot line with um, their friend Jake. Yes. Um, And that, that's not... I think that there's a really good quote, and I'm not going to quote it directly because I don't remember the exact quote, but his mom basically says that's not what his legacy should be. Um, and yes. and it goes the same for all of the all of them, you know, like not just, you know, and so it's important to show to show that. You know, I mean, she says even he yeah, he shot that cop, but that's not all he's done. Yeah. Now they're trying to paint him this way, which you see a lot in media, not just with, you know, black people, people of color getting unnecessarily killed or assaulted by police and then being propped up as criminals or showing all the bad stuff or the one bad thing they did. You see, you know, that's not the only thing they've done. Just because they did do it doesn't mean that's everything that they did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if it was a white person doing it, and you see it with, like, sexual assault cases. The person who does it, usually a white man, is like, uh, Oh no, this poor boy, this poor little fella. Uh, what's his future going to be like? We can't ruin his life. Meanwhile, the person who's been assaulted is like, What the fuck about me? Yeah. Yeah, it happens way too often and unfortunately still happens. It, yeah. The whole... Like, similarly to to Ma Rainey, almost you you get to see kind of like this t twisted tale and 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 like manip not like manipulation and use and power play, um, especially against people of color. And you know, you see it with Bill as he's with all the different setups he's b give being given with the FBI and like. And then, and then, basically every moment that the police are involved. <laughs> that freaking C four thing. Yeah. Or when Bill bitches out, not bitches out. He's new. 
he was planning on leaving, but when the, the Panthers headquarters gets attacked by the cops, and there's only two of them versus like 20 guys. Yeah. And Bill just leaves. Yeah. And then doesn't have to pay the consequences because the other two get arrested. <laughs> um, sure don't. What was the other one I said? Oh, it was... Uh, Oh, the C4 thing was nuts. It just seemed like he was wearing the wire like you mentioned on the notes, but he, it was just really crazy and kind of out of nowhere. It's out of nowhere and it's like so over the top and, and we don't get a lot of context as to what, what made him suggest this, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, and, 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 but the, the same way that Fred and I think it's Jimmy react. They're just like. No, it couldn't have been Jimmy. Jimmy died already. Okay. I don't know which, who, who, I don't remember who else is with them, but they, the way both of them react, they're just like, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> In like the same way the audience is, you know? Yes. But it shows the strength of Fred's character oh, in yeah. that moment too. Cause you see, Bill's main motivation, we see that he's wearing a wire a little bit after the scene, but at least before then, knowing what we know that Fred does is that he just at least, at the minimum, seems to want to be done with everything. Uh-huh. But Fred's still like, no, nah, that was basically, I just said a metaphor, man. <laughs> yeah, kill all of them, but like as a metaphor, yeah. metaphorically kill everybody. Yeah. Yeah, well, and then um, again with his with his with Fred's like perseverance and strength towards his cause is later. He's like, it's, it's a, the party is about the people, right? Not me. Like he has to mm -hmm. remind them. He's like, it's not about me. It's about them. Like, don't, don't, don't hold me up as your Messiah. I'm not your Messiah. I, this is about that. This is about them and us as a people and everything. Right. It's bigger than me. I mean, then of course, that, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I didn't really have a full thought. Oh, I didn't really either. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know, there's a, we could talk for days and go through every single little moment and point, but I think it just needs to be watched because we could not <laughs> say it as well. We don't do it justice just by talking about it. Yeah. It's just you have to watch it and experience it. Plus, you get to see Lil Rel Howery, so. Uh huh. <laughs> very well dressed, but super shady. He is very well dressed. He has this nice, like, animal fur coat. It's. Oh, oh, and then these, like, there's these intense, like, saxophone, like, very noir, like, <laughs> moments. It happens at the very beginning with the car, um, that moment. And then it comes back again, uh, after, after Bill meets Lil Rel, Rel Howery. And it's, and it's, it's like a little, like, I don't know. It's a little like doesn't fit the film, but it also like does. But <laughs> they just come out of yeah. nowhere. <laughs> and then you know, Bill die or Fred dies, and then we get those classic based on a true story little end cliff note things. But reading them was pretty messed up. Like Fred was only twenty one. Mm -hmm. The Fed shot 99 times. When they raided the To the, the Panthers building. won. Yeah. Like, that's... Ugh, disgusting. Well, and then even learning that Bill continued working with the FBI for so long... Mm-hmm. I mean, what else could he have done? Yeah. Well, and then, and then also learning how long Deborah stayed with the party as well, with the Black Panther Party. It's like... It also, again, drives home how not long ago this was <laughs> and really, like, really tells you, like, yeah. Just how uh, fucked up our history is mm -hmm. and how there was a 12-year civil suit and well, where they were going for $44 million and got a million. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, again, a lot of this is still happens today. Um Yes. There are plenty of stories where uh, a con of someone on trial t 
takes the lighter sentence of working with the cops or the FBI in order in order to not get the harsh sentence for something little, you know. Right. And then having to <laughs> throw away a lot of their life, unfortunately, against their choice. It's or ruin others' lives as well. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, I don't have a whole so, lot of a whole lot of rants about the movie. Um, I don't have any rants about the maybe the saxophones film but... itself. <laughs> I don't have anything again uh, rants about the direction or the acting or the yeah. way in which the film was made. Merely I about the it. content within it uh-huh. and how these things make me feel. Yeah. Uh, but almost in like a like you should feel that way you know right <laughs> if you don't I'm, feel that, that way so harsh. It's I'm sorry. Up. but like <laughs> we should no no especially you should. as white people we should feel that way if you don't watch <laughs> should feel if you awful. watch this movie and don't feel mad at the end you're probably not a be- the best person oh shit. they're also probably not listening to our podcast but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's a it's a tragic, sad, but thought provoking story. It really makes you think about everything. Really makes me want to rewrite the history I was told, and not rewrite as in like I can't change, change history, but but go re go do my research and 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 learn what bullshit <laughs> we were. We were I want to travel to the time of. where. It could be taught what actually freaking happened uh-huh. in history, not what I'm being spoon fed or whatever that bullshit is. Yeah, yeah, and and again, it's not even. Uh, it's also like there's a certain autonomy we lack as youth that we don't even realize until we're older. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, I think with the younger generation, they do have a little more autonomy than we were given growing up, mm-hmm. but that doesn't. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, there's, it's still not great. It's not the best. Like, there's there's so many... I don't remember what state. I think it's Florida, maybe, or Georgia. There's a There was a whole, like, bill being passed, or even a trial right now, about what can and can't be taught in school, specifically regarding black history, American history, and, like, history of the Klan. And I'm like, okay, what? <laughs> like, some... I don't remember the specifics of it, but... Like it's crazy. I was like, how could they possibly pass this? Like, but they're gonna. But it, yeah. And I'm like, how how could anyone possibly agree to this? It's awful. But yeah. <laughs> People that just want to erase and walk over the past and pretend like it never happened. Yeah. And it's like, and it's not even their place to be doing it because they're way past the generation of kids who are learning this stuff. They won't be around for much longer. You know, they're they're an older age. And it's like, really, it's not <laughs> their world to be deciding this. Nope. Stuff. But they are. But they are. Um, the movie... So that's just the fucked up place we live in. Yeah. Uh, this movie mentions uh, Eyes on the Prize 2, which was a documentary made after... Um, when did they say it was... Re- it was released it was after the trial ended that the movie Maybe. was released uh, no it was later on it was i don't i just was looking at it it's actually more of a series oh and it covers a lot of black history but the episode specifically uh, with bill o'neill uh give me a second i'll see if i can find it but it's just called eyes on the prize it's 14 episodes his was number 12 mm-hmm. and that's the one that talks about fred hampton 1987 to 1990. So his episode... So he probably shot a little before then. Yeah, I believe they said at the end of the movie that his see. episode came out in 1990. Probably. Um, But it's... Well, it looks like it's in two seasons. Yeah, but it, it makes it makes you want to watch that film and, and learn... Or the series and learn a little bit more. Um, But then they have that interview with Bill O'Neill... You know, the ones that yes. they were recreating with Lakeith. And damn, they look very similar. Like, yes, they like, do. watching the real interview, I was like, damn, they cast that well. Like, their eyes, like, <laughs> you know, and then the, the His recreated episode came out well. 90. 
and I was like, good job on the casting director. But um, yeah, it makes me want to find them and watch and watch that documentary um, and learn a little bit more. It did come out in 1990. 1990. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's got Deborah in it, Will O'Neill. Mm. That's the only people that are in the movie that are in the documentary, but I still want to watch it. Yeah, yeah. And see what's what. Yeah. I saw here you didn't have a random topic, but a topic topic. Well, I wasn't sure if it would be a good one or not, but. Nah, it's good. Good job. Came up with a. Yeah. On topic topic. What um, for a random topic time? Yeah, instead of doing random topic topic time today thought we would could do a semi-relevant question um that came up while while i was watching the movie and taking notes for our episode and that question is what do you wish you had learned more about in history classes in school uh truthfully i wish we learned better more accurate american history yeah specifically in regards to uh slavery and that's and such things but also the genocide of indigenous cultures and uh-huh. how we pretty much wiped them all out because yeah. we're shitty white people and that's what shitty white people did and do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't, it's information I want to know, but really wish wasn't true, which is kind of fucked up to say. Yeah. And I, but I feel like it's also okay to not want that to be your history, but it's important to know it. So you can recognize the way your history is going now Mm -hmm. and the way to not have that happen again. History, you know, right. Change what your, your kids and grandkids history is going to be. Yes. Yeah. I, I wish we had learned more about, um, Japanese American internment. Um, Oh man. Because that's something that only recently came up again for me uh while i was living in wyoming um because one of the camps whatever you want to call it uh was there and and that's where a lot of japanese americans were sent and i have a fair amount of close friends and family friends that are japanese or asian american and and this is this is their history for their parents and grandparents and it's like we kind of just brushed over that in school uh really 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 did not talk about it much and i wish i wish we had yeah well i follow like uh george takei talks about it a lot Mm -hmm. not a lot but a fair amount yeah and and i mean now it's just something that i'll I'll just spend time researching on my own (laughs) yes but yeah. So, heavy topic on today's podcast, guys. Sorry, not sorry. But yeah. This is our history. It's important stuff that needs to be said and and talked about and and it's a film that everyone I believe needs to see and and enjoy and learn. I I would show it in class as a history teacher, probably in like an AP US like an A push class. AP US mm, history. Yes. Um, probably because you couldn't get away with it in a. Yes, you probably couldn't really get away with it in a regular history class, but AP for sure. Yeah, I think it's important stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So oh. we'll be back next week with something less heavy. I don't even remember what. I think we're talking about Justice League like. next week. If I'm not wrong, which you are let's face correct. it, I'm wrong a lot. Oh, bow, 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 bow. Yeah, so coming back next week and we'll talk about some some more stuff. Be sure to be sure to follow, like, subscribe, follow us on um, Instagram, Ben and Mickey underscore podcast for updates, weekly updates, and little news about film things. And you can hear us wherever you get your podcast or at bainandmickey.buzzsprout.com. Yep, and let us know your thoughts and opinions uh, 
on uh, about the show, about the episodes, how we're doing, what you want to see and hear, and uh, we'll try to make If it you have any way. random topics, you can also send them our way. Send them to us, but seriously send them to us because we need to refill our box. So, <laughs> so you know, send them to yes. us. Okay. Please. Have a good week. Bye. And we'll see you next time. Bye.